Welcome to The Meetings Podcast, the meeting organizer's podcast source for what's new in the meetings and events industry. Meetings Podcast is a conversation with a variety of voices that looks at events, meetings, and media. Meetings Podcast is sponsored by IMAX America, America's worldwide exhibition for incentive travel, meetings, and events. Hey, podcast listeners. This is Mike. Thank you for tuning in once again. I wanted to thank IMAX America for sponsoring. I also wanted to thank a new sponsor, thepodcastguys.com, and they're doing podcasting for events. So think about a year-round show for your event, Um, gearing up when it gets close to your event, at your event, and then after your event, uh, year-round, that you can engage, educate, and uh, entertain your specific niche or your you know, space that you're in, um, check out thepodcastguys.com and they will set it all up for you. They take care of all the technical and the creative around your event. So you don't have to, because we know you don't have time to do that. So let's get into the show and thank you so much again for listening. And I'll be back at the end to wrap it all up. Okay, welcome back to the Meetings Podcast. This is Mike McCallan with Grass Shack Events and Media, and today we have Alyssa Hurley on the show. Hello, Alyssa. Hello. I'm happy Uh, to be here. Yeah, it's fun, and we are blabbing today. We're doing it on Blab, which is fun, so we can see each other, which is nice to talk to somebody, uh, being able to see them. Normally, I do it on Skype, so that's been, um, it's kind of fun using Blab. I love Blam. I'm a big yeah. fan of Blam. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so let me do read a little blurb, blurb about you so the people who don't know who you are will know who you are, and I'm going to attempt to read this without my glasses. So that's going to be exciting. <laughs> uh, Alyssa Hurley is National Director, Client Solutions and Emergent Technologies from FMAV, right? Yes. Excellent. Uh, You have over 20 years of experience in corporate events and marketing, working with hundreds of clients in many industries from tech startups to financial powerhouses, nonprofit organizations, and global brands. Global brands, uh, not blands, but (laughs) some could be blands, I guess. Some could be. (laughs) uh, Across North America and Europe. You're tech savvy, digital, and an event strategy dynamo. Your past experience includes senior management roles at Merits and Leno's Software, where she reorganized for developing innovative client solutions while maintaining a dedicated focus on achieving strategic business objectives. As National Director of Client Solutions, Emergent Technologies at FMAV, uh, your mandate includes marketing, media lab, and leading a team of solution specialists focusing on development, developing next generation event technology solutions. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you um, have features, been featured in industry publications and a speaker on various industry events, such, including BizBash, Works, FICP conferences, and achieving the Certificate in Meeting Management CMM in 2006. Very cool. And a true digital ambassador and champion for education and space. Alyssa also teaches online through Mount Royal University's event management program. Wow, you are really cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> So that's fun. What a great write-up. Yeah, thank you. So to start it off, why don't you uh, give me your favorite quote? Um, I have a couple, actually. So I have uh, one is stay hungry, stay foolish, Mm. which I'm sure most people have heard by now. Uh, And the other one, and I'm paraphrasing it a bit, but people have said this in different ways, but ideas are crap and execution is everything. I think this quote originated from a Henry Ford quote, but um, Gary Vaynerchuk has has uh, paraphrased it into something more colorful uh, that, you know, it grounds in ideas are crap and execution is everything, which, which speaks to the point that, you know, everybody's got ideas, but unless you can execute uh, well against them, you know, they don't mean anything. So Right, right. Yeah. Do you listen to a lot of Gary Vaynerchuk stuff these days? I do. I follow him all over in all kinds of media, and I actually ran into him in uh, an airport. Uh, about a year ago and like I was such a fangirl I was like in this airport and it's late at night I'm catching the last flight out of Newark in you know that I can't even remember what terminal is but that's one that's got like the little planes out 
you know, in the middle of nowhere and there's only four gates there. And so I'm actually listening to a Gary Vaynerchuk podcast, like an old one uh-huh. on, on my headphones. And I'm sitting there, I'm kind of wandering around, I'm wandering around. And then, and I was tired, it's late in the day. I'd just come from like a three-day trade show and I see him sitting there waiting to board a plane. And so I'm like, and I take up my headset and I walk up to him like, Gary, <laughs> Gary? As if I know him, right? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. I'm like, you're Gary Vaynerchuk. Oh, my God. I knew I'd run into you in an airport one day. <laughs> and then I sounded like a total stalker. I was like, oh, gosh. But he was so nice. He was like, hey, have a seat. What are you doing? Where are you coming from? Blah, blah, blah. And we got a selfie together. And he was flying to speak at some conference in, like, South Carolina or something. But but I wish I was more prepared. Next time, <laughs> now I travel with a list of questions for Gary Vaynerchuk. In case you? I run into an airport again because I, fe- I just blanked out. How funny. So. And, and he, like, does he still answer all his stuff on – I remember – I met him, God, so many years ago, like – seven years ago or something and it was like when he was just doing the wine library thing yeah. and, and i went to this m- new media conference it was like for podcasters really and he was there and and before the thing i didn't know i mean i had i had never really seen him or known anything about him and i was talking to him in the hallway before like he was just walking he had a backpack on and i was just started chatting we were chatting a real nice guy Super nice guy. And then he came up on stage. And I was like, holy crap, that was the guy I was just chatting. And then he was so engaging, like crazy swearing and just, you know, yeah, it was fantastic. He's awesome. He's one of my favorite speakers. Huh. Uh, I saw him at, I think, in Toronto like, a few years back. I think it was after Crush It and before the Thank You Economy. Mm-hmm. And um, he was speaking at this um, Art of Marketing conference. And I saw him there. And then I saw him after getting into his cab. And I had to go up to him and say, oh, oh thank you. Just want to say thank you. <laughs> and so when I saw him in the airport, I'm like, I saw you here. I saw you at the Art of Marketing. I saw you at South by Southwest. I follow your blog. Like, I probably sounded like a raving lunatic stalker <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's pretty fantastic i i got kind of over too much of him and after a while i was like i had to stop because it was just too much he was too much for me i had because i was like there's so much to do and you know at the time but he was like that time he was like answering everything that would come yeah. his way like he'd spend all day answering emails and like answered yeah. everybody. That was his thing. Uh, did he, yeah. But now he's this huge company and stuff. So I don't know. Is he's he still- this huge. He's got this huge social media marketing company. Yeah. I actually heard him on a podcast once said saying that they were going to get into event marketing that VaynerMedia wow. was going to get into that. And so that was one of the questions that I meant to ask him in the airport. It's like, Hey, what's going on in events? And I, yeah, I blanked out, but yeah, one yeah, day, yeah. one day yeah. we're going to ask him what's going on in events. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's jump right in right now and tell me uh, a little bit about your career path and let led us to this great mo- moment we're having right now. Um, <laughs> how, how much time you- do we have? <laughs> <laughs> we have all the time in the world, really. Um, so, t- tell me how you got into uh, got into the events business. Um, so, I um, I was working in Toronto and going to school full time, and I was. Um, I was working in a marketing research company. You know, those people who call you up when you're having dinner and say, hey, who are you going to vote for in the upcoming election? Mm -hmm. You know, and crazy questions like that. Uh, So I was one of those people. And we shared an office with a um, tech conference organizing company. And one day they said, hey, we need a conference coordinator to help us with this event. Can you help us out? And that conference was PC World Expo. Mm. So it was the largest tech conference in Canada at that time with like 10,000 attendees. And I was like, oh, sure, why not? And then a light bulb went off like, hey, I could do this. I'm an events person. This is what I do. <laughs> well, shortly after that conference, the the company went under and I was like, I was crushed. I was devastated. I was like, that was my going to be my career. What am I going to do now? And so um, I ended up working in financial services next. Uh, in meeting um, in um, sales support. Mm -hmm. And in the evenings, I was going across the street in the financial district and I was creating presentation decks for IPOs that were happening. 
Uh, so, you know, they're down to the last minute to the wire, right, to get their presentations ready to present the next morning for IPO release. And so that's what I would do in the evenings. And then from there, I actually went to go work in a, in a, a mutual fund company doing events. And then from there, I've worked corporate. I jumped agency side. I went back to corporate. I done agency side. Um, <laughs> so I flipped back and forth uh, in a lot of different roles. I had my own company for a while, for about four years, and um, ultimately ended up in uh, event tech. And so I worked for Leno Software, which was based in San Francisco, um, because I've always been passionate about technology. So I did that. And um, now I'm in a different area of technology, which is the experience and AV and staging side. So this is where I am today. Yeah. And how long have you been doing this now? I, uh, this job I mean, at this, FMAV. Yeah. Yeah. Aren't you brand new there or did you? I am brand new. I am two weeks in. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> and it's great to kind of jump around because you really get a feel for the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah. I kind of feel bad for sometimes for some people who have been doing the same thing for years and years and years, you know? Yeah. And I'm always very curious about different things. So my curiosity leads me in a lot of different directions. Very and that's cool. part that relates back to the quote, stay hungry, stay foolish. Yeah, I'm always just curious about things I don't know or haven't done. And so I'm, I, I like to try different things. So what's the biggest challenge you've encountered um, in this whole business? <sighs> That's a tough one because there's so many. There's challenges every day. It's hard to pick out a. It's hard to pick out one. Um, so I would say I think probably the one of the biggest challenges I had when I was working with Microsoft as a client was starting to um, help them measure their events in relation to how they advance their sales cycle. And it was conversations that we had been having. And so I've always been very curious about event measurement and event ROI and relating it to business objectives. But I think that was probably one of the biggest challenges I had. And luckily, I was working for Merits at the time, which has this great research division. So I could pull in some big brains from research to say, okay, how are we going to do this? And so um, we ultimately came up with a predictive methodology for them um, that would allow them to accurately predict which events to target, which audiences at which point in the sales cycle to have the greatest impact to accelerate them. Very cool. So, and that's yeah. probably helping you now. It does. It helps me every day. And um, you're your two weeks in, stuff to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I try to apply that same type of curiosity and relating to business objectives in, in every role I have. Very cool. Very cool. So what made you, what was that? Was there a moment that you, um, I asked this question because I had this moment. So I always ask it to people. Was there a moment that made you know that you had made the right decision to, you know, join, to start in on this career, the advanced stuff and, um, or has it happened yet? <laughs> <laughs> I never know. I always keep thinking, what am I going to be when I grow up? Um, yeah. I, I think so. I think it was right around the time that I, I started to work um, full time in corporate events that it gave me that uh, idea to say, oh, hey, I can see how what I do has an impact on business objectives. And, and, and so that really that really started it for me. And, and that was when I was in financial services. Yeah. And that's so important. There's so many people that don't do think about that, you know? Um, so tell us basically, this is kind of the time for you to tell us really what you do and what you're doing uh, you're, <laughs> in your new position. Cause I think it's very cool. It's a, actually, it's a neat time to talk to you about it. You know, <laughs> it is a neat time. Cause I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> yeah. And that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> But did, you, did, they, did they make this job for you or, or is this, did you take over for someone? Uh, this job had not previously existed. That's so, what I was thinking. Cause it seems like you're a very niche. That's a great little niche for you to dive in. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, uh, they had a need, which was, ap- uh, which just happened to fit my skill set, And um, so it works for me. So um, FMAV is actually the, the largest, um, Canadian based um, audiovisual and staging company. And so they have evolved over the last couple of years, started as Frischkorn Audiovisual, which was um, a supplier of mine uh, in the past, and they had merged with MediaCo. Now they 
they've evolved. There's been other acquisitions over time, and they're evolving now. In the last few months, they have rebranded as FMAV, so a new entity, a new future. And um, so as part of that organization, um, the role that I'm in was created. And um, so I have ultimate responsibility for marketing, so our national director of marketing. Um, and the marketing team works with me, um, as well as Media Lab, which is our content development team. So the guys who make all the, the cool graphics and presentations and content for projection mapping and things like that, which is fun. And then there's also a team of solution specialists, which focus on next generation solutions. And so those solutions are, you know, things like um, virtual reality. We're doing experiments in um um, augmented reality, as well as, you know, applications like digital signage. And so all kinds of different ways to apply technology solutions mm -hmm. to um, creating um, meaningful experiences. So when do you enter the um, equation? I mean, I mean, you know, I've been in the production business for a million years. And yes. It just seems like I always wonder how, like, when do they, when do you come into the are you writing up the proposals coming up with the creative on these things? Is that the yes. plan anyway, I guess, I guess. Sorry. So there is, there is part of that. So uh, the marketing team and media lab um, will have input in the pre-sales process mm -hmm. and the solutions team is looking further ahead um, to advance solutions that maybe clients aren't thinking of yet, or maybe clients may be asking, how can we do this? We want to facilitate this type of connection with an audience and we're struggling with how to do that. So the solutions team may get involved in that. So so it's a combination of ways we might get involved. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and so where do you see uh, – it's kind of an issue of the future there um, for you there. I mean, is there um, – I guess it's so early you can't really tell. But, uh, it is do early. You see, do, you see, do you see it evolving into something, uh, something special? Yeah, so I actually I the one of the main reasons I joined the company is their vision for the future and their vision of the role um of an AV company evolving. And it's really evolving beyond, you know, lighting and staging and things like that to have a more encompassing event technology uh, impact and knowledge um, that pervades like all aspects of event technology in, in an event. Um, and so I find that really interesting um, and it makes a lot of sense for them to come together. And so I think our role will change to be more advisory um, over time about event technology in general. Hmm. And, 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 that so, is, and that's exciting. Yeah, that is. And it's been interesting for me to see how the industries evolve being in a production company, having always working for a production company, never having any actual gear, like there's never been any gear around, um, and how the AV companies are now, um, well, I think they're smart to start doing the production side of it too. You know, mm -hmm. and, and they, they used to say, oh, we do production. But nowadays it seems like there are some companies that are very good at that. AV companies that can come in and actually do everything, right? You know, you know, build the experience around it and everything, and take ownership of it, which I love, sort of sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. And a lot of our <laughs> solutions are a lot of our solutions these days are digital. So you know, when we're talking virtual reality and mm -hmm. augmented reality, there's a lot of there's a huge digital component um, to what we do now, and so that that's going to continue to evolve. I agree. I agree. I agree. So are you struggling with anything right now? Um, I ask personal or professional just because it's kind of like, you know, maybe something you are struggling with that we could talk about. I don't know. But it's hard again with your professional life because you just started. What are you struggling with, with right now with your new job? Um, I'm struggling to, um, to, and, and it's just a time thing, two weeks in, you know, I don't know um, all of our clients and I don't know um, everybody in the company and I don't know where po uh, pockets of knowledge are. And so it's a discovery process. Mm -hmm. um, so that's probably my biggest challenge right now is, you know, discovering as much uh, as I can about what we have in the organization as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if you can help with that. Can you help? No, it's, no I can't really help you with that. <laughs> well, you know, you can call me if you want to talk. Anytime. Okay. So that might help. That's the only thing I can offer up. I, it's, it's funny because it is, um, I haven't had a job in so many years. 
I mean, I've had my own company for a long time now, but I remember that walking in there, you know, and trying to figure out how everything works. Just, you know, the little things too, about how to fill out your, you know, all the, the, the kind of paperworky stuff that they want, you know, when you get back into working for a company, like it is yeah. necessarily like, like your timesheets in a way, like what time are you putting to what job? And then and how does that, all, that whole thing work? But yeah. um, you will learn quickly. I, I'm sure I am, but I'm excited that I get to, like I would spend a huge amount of time curious about event technology. And so I'm still a little bit in awe. It's like, wow, I get to think and talk about event technology all the time. Yeah. That's yeah, exciting. that's yeah, it's very cool. Instead of it just being one part of my role. So. Yeah, no, no, that's that's really cool. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna ask you a few questions that are kind of more about you, so people can learn about you. Okay. Um, do you do you have any kind of morning rituals? Cause it's kind of fun to hear what people t- take take people through their day because successful people sometimes do, you know you're a Gary Vaynerchuk fan. Yeah. Basically. Can you take us through a typical day? Like, do you have a, a morning rituals? Do you eat certain foods, you know, exercise maybe, or do you um, look at the same things on the, what, what do you look at? Um, what's your web, you know, where's your web journey in the mornings? Do you go to this or do you go to Facebook or do you have different things? So t- take us through a little bit of your, about a little bit about you. Sure. Um, so I, I wake up early in the morning and the first thing I do is take my, let my dogs outside and feed them breakfast. <laughs> we have, there are four dogs. Oh, wow. Um, it's a pack. That we have, it is a pack. And so that's my first priority. Uh, then I can, then are they I want, big dogs or are they little dogs? So there are four, uh, and they range in size, large, medium, and small. <laughs> Uh, and all different personalities. Oh. No, well, no, they, it's just kind of turned out that way over time. But then you'll be so you'll find that my life, my life revolves around event technology and dogs. So that's basically two things. Um, also, on our property, we have a dog boarding kennel that my husband runs. Oh wow. Yeah, so usually in the morning after I see to our dogs, I go out to the kennel and I look after those dogs. So I take them out and we walk around wow, and cool. have our morning exercise together and feed. And, and so that's what I do in the morning. I spend time with the dogs. That's the first thing. Wow, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, after that's done, I come back in and um, have some hot water with lemon. And I've started uh, meditating now nice. for 10 minutes because because um, my mind is usually going really fast in the morning. I need to settle it down. Uh, so I've started meditating in the morning. And then then I'll hit the shower and get ready for work. And then once um, once I'm ready for work, I'll prepare some breakfast. Um, in the winter now, it's usually steel-cut oatmeal. In the summer, it's more of a protein smoothie. And it also depends how much time I have as well. And then usually while I'm having breakfast, I will go online and I will check social feeds. So I will check um, Nuzzle is one I check, which shows me the most popular items from the people that are on Twitter. I've never heard of Nuzzle. And then Nuzzle, check out Nuzzle, Nuzzle Nuzzle.com, N-U-Z, sorry, (laughs) N-U-Z-Z-E-L.com. And Uh so it'll show you, you log in with your Twitter, you can also relate it to, connect it to your Facebook, and then it'll show you the top stories from the people that you follow, like based on how many times it's been shared and things like that. So I'll check that. I'll have a quick glance through feeds on Hootsuite, um, you know, to following certain tags like event profs, event tech, things like that. And then uh, and then I'll go to work. And I usually listen to uh, podcasts on my way to work. Very cool. In the car. And what, what yeah. podcasts do you listen to? What are your favorite ones? Well, I listen to the meetings podcast, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, right? Hey, as soon as whenever there's one available, it's on my list. Uh, let me see what else I have. I also listen to um, the Event Tech Podcast. I have Marketing Over Coffee. Oh yeah, I love that. One. I have events, events off, uh, events uncovered with Sylvia Pellegrini. Mm-hmm. I also listen to um, the Start Some Shift Podcast with Laura McCullough. 
I also have the Gary V show. Gary V's got to be on the list. Um, and he has and a regular, was, like he has like a regular podcast now, like just podcast. I haven't listened to his podcast. He podcast. does. He takes he d- he takes his Ask Gary. V. So he does a almost oh. a daily show. Ask Gary V, and people tweet in questions and things like that. And oh. so um, it's the audio of that. Interesting. Um, yeah which they post online. And then I listened to some other marketing ones like online marketing made easy with Amy Porterfield, um, social media marketing podcasts, things like that. And and I'm also listening to serial now, the serial podcast. Yeah. That's fun. Huh? Yeah. I went to a uh, creative live course. Yes. Two days ago, last week, not two days ago. Today's Monday, right? It was last Thursday, sorry, and it was the guys from NPR talking about storytelling, and it was a creative oh. live class. It was really fun, but that reminds me of the serial because they were teaching the class how to write those uh, stories for the radio, you know, like Radio Lab and stuff, but serial's pretty fun, huh? Serial's good. It's so good. Yeah. 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 I, I'm like, I listened to it yesterday, actually. It's funny you say that because I was working in the yard and I listened to serial yesterday, the newest one. Yeah. And with what's his name? Uh, Bo. Yes. What do you think? What do you think about him? I don't know. I don't know yet. I can't <laughs> form an opinion. It's too early. Is that what they do? And how about the last one with the kid? Uh, do you think the he last her? one with the kid? I was like, I I was buying into the fact that he was totally innocent. I think I still I do. He, I think I do too. I think he didn't do it. Or yeah. I don't know. But they leave know. it like they don't ever – it's not definitive at there's, the end. I know. There's like, no resolution, right? But that's kind of how they were talking about the Creative Life when I went to – it was this Anna Sussman from Snap Judgments, another one. that That's there on that. It's a, okay. out here in Oakland, actually, um, and it's an NPR um, podcast like Radio Lab and This American Life. Do you ever listen to those? I have not. I I keep meaning to listen to This American They're Life because I they understand just it's very – they all, they all kind of tell the same kind of stories like that. Anyway, fun stuff. Okay, that's great. So you listen to a whole bunch of podcasts. That's great. I do. Um, I, have a long, I have a fairly long drive to work. It's about 40 minutes in, uh, with no traffic. So it could be 40 minutes to up to an hour. So it, it's a good time to listen to podcasts. Very cool. Yeah, I do that, and I listen to a lot of audio books now too. Yes, I heard that. I, I need to do that more. Yeah, I really am enjoying – I like the audiobook stuff, but and I yesterday was my thing to get back to the podcast because I miss the podcasts. So, what book um, do you gift others? Oh, there's there a, book? a few. There's cool. a couple. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so, for many years, I have been giving fellow planners um, the Getting Things Done book by David Allen hmm. because uh, I'm a uh, I. I practice the GTD methodology for managing uh, information and we're all bombarded with so much digital information, so much emails these days that, um, that, that I've always given um, that book out to my team to help them manage the, um, the massive information that comes in, particularly by email. Um, the other book that I am gifting these days is by uh, Brian Solis. Mm-hmm. And it is um, X, and it's about um, customer experience and user experience. Um, and so, um, a, a favorite book of mine in the past has been the Experience Economy. And so, I view X as this is the the current digital generation version of the Experience Economy. Very cool. I've seen him speak too. Yeah, he's very good. He's I think good. he's from here in San Francisco. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. He's an analyst at uh, Altimeter Group. So he does a lot of research. I think he's written four or five books now. This may be his fifth um, about digital trends. And yeah, so it's a good one. And it's a very nicely designed book. So it's one of the few books that I would recommend in hard copy um, because everything else I'll, you know, Kindle or ebook. Right. Um, but it was designed to, to be like a digital experience, like a, as if you were reading on an iPad. So very intense graphics and things like that. So it's a cool book. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I hear a dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I liked also, I wanted to say, I kind of was thinking too, I like that your first thing after working with the dogs is you check something called a nuzzle, which is kind of a dog thing. <laughs> <Isn't> that, <laughs> I hadn't thought of that before. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I had to, I want to, I wrote that at a little note here. Um, so, what did you want to be as a kid when you were growing up? 
Um, uh, I don't know. I did a lot of tour guiding with my parents. We would um, go on drives every Sunday. That was our Sunday thing. Oh, let's go for a drive. And I was always the navigator saying, okay, we're going to go here and then we're going to go here. And I was always giving directions. (laughs) So I think I wanted to be a tour guide. And then as I got into high school, I got involved in theater arts actually. Oh. And I became a member of the theater arts club. And I'm, I can't remember how I got into it. It may have been, had something to do with the fact that it was in the basement and, and the boys uh, football um, changing room was across the hall. <laughs> may have had something to do with that. Um, but, but yeah, I got into theater and theater arts. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to study theater. Maybe I'll be an actor. I'm not sure. And then my parents were like, no, you're not going to be an actor. That is not. (laughs) So then I was stuck and I was like, oh, I don't know. (laughs) So there's a couple (laughs) things I wanted to do. Yeah. And you're kind of still in the theater, right? I am. I, mean, I know. Yeah, that's what we what you do. Yeah, yeah. and I learned about lights and leakos and things like that in high high school. So it all yeah. makes sense now. I did that too. I did stagecraft in high school. It was fun building stages and running the lights and stuff. Yeah. My sister was an actress, so it was like I was. Oh, the scene, so you which she's really her shows. No, no, she's older, <laughs> older than me, but she's really pretty, and I was kind of more of a person for the background in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have a favorite documentary that you uh, that you like that you wanted to talk about, or or a movie even? Oh, so I started watching on. Um, there's a few good. I love documentaries. There's so many um, that are good. In fact, my favorite film genre is probably documentaries. Yeah, um, me too. So I think what I started watching lately is uh, on Netflix. Netflix has a lot of good documentaries. And so I started watching um, The Chef's Table. Have you seen that on Netflix? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's great. It's very good. Yeah. It's very good. So it gives you insight into kind of the creative mind of a chef and and their journey. So um, so I, I love that. Uh, I'm also watching the Making a Murderer series on Netflix. I, oh, I haven't seen that. Is oh, that good? you haven't? Uh, yeah. Uh-uh. So it varies along the lines of serial, you know, same type of story. And then you wonder at the end, is he guilty, is he not? Interesting. Yeah, so same type of idea in a documentary. So I binge watch that over the holidays. Um, yeah, so I'm always I'm always watching different documentaries. The Square was a good one. That's on Netflix. That was about the uh, uprising in Tahrir uh, Tahrir Square. Um, so that's an, an insightful one. So I love all kinds of documentaries. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fun, fun, fun. Mm-hmm. So um, who do you wish you could be more like? And why? Gary Vaynerchuk. <laughs> <laughs> Gary V. And why? Because I'm naturally an introvert. Mm-hmm. And I love people who are extroverted and can talk a lot. Like, I prefer to listen and observe. And that's my natural tendency. And over time, I've had to learn to, you know, push myself outside that comfort zone. But I'm, I often want to be more like extroverts. And yeah. I think that's why I love Gary Vee is like, he's such an extrovert. Like you said, it can yeah. be a bit much at times, but, but yeah, I just, I, I envy that. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 he, I, I read all those first books of his and I was, like you said, I was just totally enamored with everything he was doing and trying to copy it all. And then all of a sudden I was just exhausted from him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was so much going on. It's yeah. like, okay. Yeah. So, um, So do you listen to any music when you work? Do you have a special like Pandora or Spotify kind of channel that you like to listen to? Or do you listen to music when you work? Uh, I do sometimes. Sometimes my brain is too noisy. And sometimes if I add music, it's it's too much. Um, But uh, I typically when I'm working, I will listen to ambient electronic music. Um, so I will listen to that or, um, um, personally, I might, I'm a big fan of Oasis and Noel Gallagher. So I listen to, I have a Noel Gallagher playlist on Spotify. So I listen to that a lot. And then when I'm driving, I listen to backspin on Sirius radio because I'm a huge fan of old school hip hop. How fun. (laughs) 
<laughs> How's that That's for great. a diverse musical taste? That is really diverse and great. <laughs> and what, and you said you do because you said your mind spins a lot. Um, yeah. When you do your meditation, do you use the guided? Do you use one of those apps? Yes, yeah, I use Headspace. Oh, you do use Headspace. Yes. Okay, that's, yeah. I, I, I actually need to be guided. Otherwise, my brain can't quiet yeah. itself. It's very hard. And on the Headspace, is there a favorite one that you do on there? Because it's funny because I've been like, I don't like, I'm I'm not the, I don't like the visualization ones. And that seems like that's all that they have in there now. I'm like hit everyone. It's like the stuff is pouring in the top of your head. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and I was like, I like the ones that are, anyway, it's, I, I'm asking that question now to people who are doing headspace. Like what, which one of you enjoyed the most of those? I keep going back to the 10 minute ones, the 10 minute. Do you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I keep going back to those because they're just straightforward. I, I, you know, it's a pattern now. I know what to expect of the pattern. Okay. We're going to do this. Then we're going to do that. Then we're going to do that. Yeah. And I like that. The, I'm. I just need that simple ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. me too. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Um. Uh. Let's say. Uh, well, I got so many different questions here, but we're <laughs> running out of time here too. So I wanted to, uh, uh, you know, get it through it. Um. If you could time travel, where would you go? <sighs> um. Ba, 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 ba. Um. Probably to, I would go to England in the 60s, the mod era. Um, so I'd be very interested to go there. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, that's, I think that's all I can think of. I, fashion wise, and, you know, it was the hub of, you know, all kinds of um, unique fashion and arts and music. Uh, I think I would go to England in the 60s, the mod era. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the uh, the uh, Austin Powers kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's ask you, so what's the best advice you've ever received? Um, so my... Um, when I started to get increased um, responsibility and, and managing people and teams, um, my boss said, um, I need you to be more on the business instead of in the business. And so I keep reminding me of, of myself of that because I tend to, my natural tendency may be to get very deep in the weeds and deep in logistics. And I have to maintain the bigger picture. Um, and so that's something that I regularly remind myself and I think I've gotten better at, but it's something that, and especially for planners, it's something that I remind them is take yourself out of every once in a while and look at the bigger picture. And so that's what that advice reminds me of. So more on the business than in the business. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's a great, that's a good quote too. I know it's great. From your boss. From my boss, my current boss, who was my former boss a few years ago at Merritt's. So. Oh, wow. So I'm very happy to be working with him again. And I remember that, great. that quote. That's great. Yeah. That's great. That's great. And that's funny that our business is so, such <laughs> that way, isn't it? Like it's so kind of incestuous and you, people move around. It's like, I'm still working with the same people that I, the, the first day I walked into my first job for one of these, I'm still, yeah. In fact, he was just here. Yeah. Uh, one of my friends, like I met the first day and he walked in the door here and we've been in the business yeah. for too long to even say, um, what's working for you right now? Do you have a new app, a vitamin? Um, I know you kind of said some of the things, but what, what do you, what's really working for you right now? Uh, snowblower, I was going to say. Snowblower, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the snowblower works well, although we don't have that much. We have less snow than we had last year. Um, so we're not getting slammed like, you know, the East Coast U.S. We're yeah. pretty good here. We have a lot less. Um, so snow is good this year, but snowblower really works. And because we, I live in the country, so we have um, 37 acres. And wow. so and a long driveway. So snowblower is important. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I didn't mean to set you off on that. So what's okay. working for you? Do you uh, have a new app or like, you know, vitamin or, uh, or CAC? I don't have a vitamin. Um, a work <laughs> hack is, uh, well, I always apply my getting things done methodology to stuff. So I've applied a way to organize Gmail um, according to the get things done 
methodology. So there's somebody Sorry. who's published it online. So you flag things. So it gets it, it stuff out of your inbox and into other lists. So this is my action list. This is what I'm waiting for, things like that. So, um, so it's a hack that I've applied to Gmail. Um, I'm using Wonderlist for personal task management and then Asana for work project management. And I, and so and do I, I you really like, like Asana? Asana. I do you, like Asana. Have you always used Asana. Yeah, because I use that too. Yeah. I like Asana. I think it's really good for teams. I've used several things like Basecamp and um, Teamwork PM, and um, I like Asana. Hmm, very yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, I find it good when I use virtual assistants using Asana. Yeah. Yeah. Because they can really task task through it. Yeah. When it's you know stuff that has to be done the same way every time. Right. And I have such diverse teams now, like the solution specialist. So we're working on solution development projects. We're working on marketing projects. So um, a lot of different projects and different people work on different things. So Asana helps it. Uh, helps keep it all organized and everybody on and everybody on track. And it's free too. And it's free. That is the best part. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite industry event you attend? And why is it so, why is it your favorite event? Um, so there's two. Incentive Works is the uh, main industry in, uh, event in Canada for the meetings, events, and incentive travel industry. And that happens in August every year in Toronto. Um, and so that's always a great event where you see everybody in the Canadian industry come together. Um, the other um, industry event that I went to for the first time last year was SEMA's Summit, so the Corporate Event Marketing Association. Um, that was in San Diego, and that was a really, really good event. Um, it was a couple days. A lot of the um, attendees um, are planners in the tech sector, and mm -hmm. it was very planner-focused and um, some really great speakers, you know, great, unique uh, room layouts and experiences. That that was a really great event, and I just went to it for the first time last year. Very cool. I've never been. That, I, that's one I should go to. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the coolest new trend you've seen or excited about? Virtual reality. Yeah. Virtual reality is pretty and how, cool. And how is that? How is that? Give me an example of something that's someone's using that. So we were just, um, our, we were participating in the Canadian and Society of Association Executives Conference or event earlier this week or last week in Ottawa. And uh, in our booth, we were demonstrating um, how virtual reality can be applied to pre-visualize your event. So you're used to seeing 2D renderings, right, of your room and your stage, mm -hmm. and then 3D renderings, right? But this is the next one, virtual reality rendering. So it takes the 3D rendering and puts you in it so you can immerse yourself in, okay, this wow. is what my participant is going to experience at this event. So, yeah, that's Very the cool, cool application we're doing right now. Very but I'm cool. super excited about that. And then I think, and, and where we can take that beyond. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Um. If you could talk to the high school senior you, this is the last question, by the way, uh, what would you tell yourself? I would tell myself, hey, go to theater school. Forget what your parents say. <laughs> You're going to end up in events anyway, and all that knowledge will serve you well. And it'll help you, yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's a good one. <laughs> all right. So where can people get a hold of you, and uh, where are the places that people get a hold of you? So um, you can usually find me on Twitter at Alisa Hurley. Uh, you can also find me on hurleyscomet.com, which is my blog slash social aggregator. Um, nice. Yeah, you can find me there. And then also uh, at email at ahurley at fmav.ca. And yeah, any number of ways. Very cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me. Thanks. And I hope we can do it again. Me too. After you're in your job for a little longer, then we can really dig into what, what's been going on. It sounds really exciting, though. It is. It is super exciting. Yeah. So 
I'll definitely uh, keep you updated on how things go. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, that was fun. Thank you for listening all the way through the podcast. And I wanted to thank our sponsors, IMX America and thepodcastguys.com for your event podcasting. And if you hadn't thought of it yet, that's actually us. We are now doing podcasting for events. So it's really fun. We're calling it thepodcastguys.com is the URL that we had. So we're using that. And it, it sends you to the Grass Shack Events and Media site. But we've got a whole thing set up. Some things you should know about podcasting. Americans listen to approximately 21 million 117,000 hours of podcast audio every day. One third of Americans, 12 years or older, have, have now now say that they have listened to at least one podcast. Podcasting is on the rise. Uh, monthly audio podcast consumption grew from approximately 39 million monthly users in 2014 to approximately 46 million in 2015. So it's something you should think about for your event. You have a lot of content there that you can use year round to keep your attendees and your members, if you're an association, engaged, educated, and entertained. So it's something to think about. So head over to the podcast, guys, or you can always call me or tweet me or send up a smoke signal and I'll come around in and we can talk about podcasting. But we have a couple of clients now that are really enjoying it. So check it out. And uh, again, thanks for listening. And I appreciate you spending the time with me. We appreciate and thank you for listening to the Meetings Podcast. Please email with any questions or comments to meetingspodcast at gmail.com. Meetings Podcast is sponsored by IMAX America, America's worldwide exhibition for incentive travel, meetings, and events. The Meetings Podcast theme music is brought to you by the Delgado Brothers, which can be found at delgadobrothers.com.